I'm sorry. Hey, so this is the uh, episode two of the Hail to the King podcast. It's a Stephen King book club that uh, myself, Magnus, and my buddy Mark. Hi. I screwed that up, but that's okay. Uh, we we just uh, are big Stephen King fans, just uh, wanting to get together and discuss, you know, not not overanalyze, but not underanalyze some of uh, Stephen King's stories. Today we are going to do The Jaunt, which was uh, in Skeleton Crew, which was published in I Don't Even Know. Mark will find out while I'm uh, giving you a synopsis here. So... <clears throat> The story takes place, uh, I think it was uh, 2307, right around there. They're not specific, but uh, they refer to, you know, 320 years ago and stuff like that. And uh, it's a family of four, a father, mother, daughter, and son, who are at a jaunt station uh, getting ready to teleport to Mars. Uh, tele the story is... The story of teleportation and the story of... <laughs> oh, my God. By the way, we have kids. Not together. Um, so you're going to hear Magnus's kids. Yeah, you're going to hear some kids screaming in the background on this episode. Don't judge us. <laughs> so my mind wandered a little bit there because I knew I was going to start hearing the screaming. Um, anyways, uh, a family of four who uh, the father works for Texaco Oil and Water. Uh, in the future, it looks like water is a major natural resource. Um, they are relocating to Mars. And uh, the father begins to uh, calm his children's nerves and his, his family's nerves uh, regarding the jaunt. Um, and he's giving them kind of a history lesson. And uh, I guess the story, I, well, where would you go from there with it? Well, he's trying, so he's he's jaunted. Um, oh, he's jaunted like 25, 25 times, I believe. His kids have not, and his, I don't believe his wife has. It doesn't mention her. And so... They have he, cold feet, I guess. Yeah, they have bit. cold feet. He's trying to avoid any sort of, you know, kids blowing up, screaming when... They gas when they, you. Yeah, they gas you, they sedate you, and you kind of don't really know why, but and so you kind of figure out why. That's that's a little part of the driving Yeah, force. and I guess we'll just go ahead and spoil it right now uh, in the synopsis, I guess, but it does not go well for uh, one of the family members, and we'll kind of, I guess, get to that. So that's the story. Sure. Yeah. So, um, anyways, uh, at the beginning they start off. Uh, it's the New York. Is it like Central Station? Is that where it is? It is. But so it's it's essentially like a travel terminal, like an airport. You know, it's a jaunt station. Um, they have like a hundred couches laid out. Um, where people come and they get comfortable the the room they go in this teleportation chamber is all about comfort um i think he mentions that yeah there's like just like kind of bland colored painting walls you know nothing too outrageous and exciting mm -hmm. but at the same time nothing that's like over sterile like a scary hospital or something like that it's yeah, just it's something to, to put calm you at ease your nerves i wouldn't be surprised if they were playing some enya you know, something like that. But, uh, Maybe some ABBA. <laughs> turn on the, the Yanni music. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, I think he even mentions that there was uh, attendants who they seat you, and he mentions that they will bring you milk, like even a glass of milk, you know, to calm your nerves, yeah. something to so it's bring you back to the womb a little, you know. It's almost like a more calming... It's like a more calming um, airplane ride yeah, and where it's... they bring you, you have attendants, they bring you stuff. There's couches. Mm -hmm. I believe they're leather couches, but they're really, they sound like very just plush, nice, comfy, comfy couch. couches. And, oh, it's the New York Port Author Authority Terminal. Okay. And this, um, just going back to it because I did find it, oh, Skeleton yeah. Crew was published in 1985. 85. Okay, uh, well, so this. was compiled in 1985. Compiled. 
So yeah, I know the story he wrote a little earlier. It was first published for like a Twilight Zone magazine. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. I mean, it's a total Twilight Zone story. I think it's his, probably his most Twilight Zone, you know. Like it has that classic Ray Bradbury sci-fi feel. Yes. With a little more horror, I guess. But uh, A little Stephen King horror. It doesn't start out... And I, I was telling my wife about about the story, and it doesn't feel like a Stephen King story at the start. And but at the end, you you see kind of <laughs> he adds his little his little kingly spice at the end, mm-hmm. and it's it's good. I I love I yeah. love this short story. Re- reading it, uh, if if this is one of your favorites again, uh, so a, a little history lesson for anyone who cares to listen, which you're listening to our podcast so sure but uh <laughs> i'm i've i've read all stephen king's published works uh mostly there's a few of his newer ones that i haven't checked out yet for sake of freshness for the podcast anyways uh mark doesn't like he's not as big on the short story and so not necessarily that he doesn't like them but i have words to say about that yeah so so this is definitely his favorite one. This is the I think one of the first ones I had him read uh, a selection out of Skeleton Crew. I'm like, you know, read this one, this one, and this one. And yeah, this is a good one. But anyways, this this story is the most like Ray Bradbury, uh, Isaac Asimov, uh, what's his name, uh, Philip K. Dick. Yeah. You know, some of those guys who are really good at the short story. This is Skeleton Crew. Honestly, I think I think the uh, the one with the guy who eats himself uh, slowly. The, yeah, that one is on Skeleton Crew, I believe. I there were there were a couple cool things. Okay, but yeah, so I, need, I need to defend myself. Yeah, defend yourself. A I need bit. to defend myself. I will. Okay, so I've read quite a bit. Magnus is at level nine thousand. I'm I'm at level. What? You give me a level. I gave you one. Four thousand. I'm at four. Come you, on, come on. Read, okay, how about, how about how about I do 55? 55? 55. 55. Not 55,000, just 55. Oh. <laughs> no, you've you've definitely gone through a good, like, two-thirds. No, so... Like, two-thirds of his stuff, at least. I don't know why I... I, I can't... I... I'm not as... I'm not as interested in short stories as I am in a novel. Yeah, but I think uh, Stephen King described it as a like a novel's like a relationship, and no. a short stories like a, a stolen kiss in the dark or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and and I and I listened to that introduction, yeah, the introduction, and that good. really really helped me shift my mindset. And I think the thing that was broken in my brain was I was expecting everything I wanted from a novel and applying all those expectations to the short story. And the short story can't live up to it, not because of the quality of writing mm-hmm. or anything like that. It's just, <laughs> I want to sink my teeth into yeah. it. And right it's... as the short story gets to the point that I'm excited, it ends. Yeah. And so Stephen King describes <laughs> like a novel is a love affair. Love affair, that's what it was. And a short story is just a, a nice little kiss. No tongue. <laughs> Nothing, no funny business. Just a little kiss with a stranger in the dark, and then done. Yep. And once I shifted my mindset, I think, you know, I think I'm going to enjoy short stories more than I have, or even what, just period. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to give like things like the jaunt their own little episode like this, and then we'll just read like marathon read like four or five crap ones just to briefly talk about them here and basically give a thumbs up or thumbs down kind of brief impressions because there's there's some kind of garbagey stephen king uh short stories as hard as it is for me to admit that and i shouldn't say garbagey let's <laughs> say less than stellar they may not be your cup of tea yeah i'm looking at you tommy knockers <laughs> oh that's well that's not a short <laughs> that's story. not a short story that's a very but... long story <laughs> I'm not looking forward to rereading Tommy Knockers. But we're going I've, to do it. I think that's one of his few books that I've only read once. Anyways, hey man, let's let's talk about the jaunt. Okay. So um, we've talked about the short stories. Want to uh, go over uh, some of the characters it, or? Um. Yeah, I guess we can give the names. So it's the Oates family. We've got Mark, hey. that's the husband. Hey, Mark. We've got Marilis, 
uh, Ricky, who oh Marilis is the wife. Ricky is a son, and Patricia is the daughter. And uh, another major character uh, throughout all of this is the inventor himself of uh, the the jaunting process, which is also referred to as the Karoon process. Named right? after yeah. process, right? Yep, named uh, after Victor Karoon. Victor Karoon, who in 1987 uh, invented teleportation and uh i, uh, I, I guess it stumbled stumbled upon stumbled they mentioned upon. his knee bumped some uh you know some it was an I, it was an ion gun it bumped some <laughs> stuff and he discovered yeah yeah the I, jaunt. I, and the first thing he teleported was uh to his two fingers just going through and uh i guess he ended up getting a sliver Yes. Ultimately, he discovered that he got a sliver from the wood on the other side of where the portal uh, went to. I yeah. guess. Um, it did not cut off his fingers. I no, it didn't I, cut him I, off. When it, I read it, it almost sounded and felt like mm-hmm. it went through. And he mentions blood. He it, mentions blood, and, and you so, would see the blood. Yeah. Yeah, he, you would see the red. You he know. mentions that he felt like he saw red so much, like. He was so sure that it cut off his fingers that he did see red. Did not cut off his fingers. It just went through these two little portals. I'm thinking little doors at the end yeah. of a table. Some sort of contained in like a little metal thing or something, you know. Yeah. Who who knows exactly what it And he got a little like. splinter when his when his fingers went through the other side and actually kind of touch touch the table. Touch the table, you know, there's I guess it wasn't good like table a, it's like it sounds like it's in a barn yeah like so i picture like this really, whole thing with really like cheap a bunch of like hay and stuff you maybe know, a wooden horse type really, table really like run down lab you yeah. know he's talking about that he's completely broke he's invested everything in his life this is this is it you know he has 20 dollars in his bank account yeah you know and he spent like 15 bucks on on, a, on the mice on uh some some mice when he discovered the process yeah um Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is uh, with the port. We were talking about the portal size. Um, I'm trying to figure out exactly how it would work in the por- in the stations, the jaunting stations in the future, like with the family. Um, it's like, do they sit in these chairs and then like, uh, what's what's that barber, the Johnny Depp, um, Sweeney, Sweeney Todd? Todd. Yeah. It's like, does it like Sweeney Todd style, just like dump them down a portal? Like, I totally, I, I have no idea. And it's like, what do they do? Do they pop out of the sky and land on the couch in Mars? Like. I, so I, okay. Here's what I imagined. Mm-hmm. I've imagined it both ways. Okay. I've heard it both ways. Um, so one, they do talk about the jaunt, uh, these these sort of slides. And and they, they're these slides of the jaunt stations that people go and kind of go down this little so ramp. so maybe it dumps them forward down a slide yeah or maybe i don't know it, it's not too specific and, and that doesn't that doesn't really break it for me but i kind of imagine these couches maybe they're on wheels and that's how they're huh. kind of oh, slid down like a roller coaster yeah they're slid down but they don't talk about fastening any seat belts you know so but it's also not like uh oh it's it's not it's not this jarring process. It's not like a yeah. ride. <laughs> we. It's like when okay. It's like when you're moving, and you have you know two guys moving, and you dumb still little think... dumb little kid jumps on the couch, and he's he's kind of moving them yeah. around. I know, but you'd still <laughs> think that you know they would need some sort of like fastener, and they don't That's talk true. about a fastener. And you you say slide. And now I vaguely remember uh, something about a slide. I even wrote slide question mark in my notes. There, yeah, there but is there is a slide in there. There's a slide, um, and so yeah, and then does it dump them out the ceiling and they just kind of plop down? <laughs> like it's funny, it's funny to picture because they don't they don't really specify in the no. story, and you don't actually you don't actually see the see the process. Yeah. So you, but, the story is is from two point of views. Yeah, there's uh, the family in the year. Uh, 2307 ish t- getting ready for their jaunt yeah. and it's been established for a co- you know a couple and you really years. only see it from mark's point of view mark oats yeah and then it cuts back to uh victor caroon and him going through 
inventing it in 1987. Yeah, and so you really only see it from then, and they kind of skip that part. I guess, I, I don't know, I guess King, maybe for the sake of the short story, <laughs> uh, decided to... Cut, cut out the, the details. Yeah, well, cut, cut it out. And well, you know what? But some not of even the de- be... Focus on s- certain details of the process. Yeah, because you can't, you can't focus on everything, and I think... If it get got, if he had gone through painstakingly writing all these details of how it worked and everything, and I don't think he would have taken too much time to do that. Maybe he felt, you know, it would have detracted from the climax of the story. Mm-hmm. I guess depending on where it was, but yeah, I mean, you know, you as get... soon as they're sedated, it goes to the climax, and that's I think what he wanted yeah. to focus it... on rather than the process. I guess the only thing it kind of wrecks and kind of leaves for. A fun little interpretation as if anyone ever adapts this into like a either a tv episode or a movie i could easily see it being an episode of a have you ever heard of dark mirror no black mirror is what it's called Uh, it's on netflix and uh it's one of one of the best shows i've ever seen just it's essentially uh like a near future uh every episode kind of deals with a certain aspect of like technology and kind of the dark and the light parts of it like for instance people who have like eyeballs that can record everything they see and they can also go back and replay things and they can you know go everything basically their mind it becomes a a dvr yeah and you can replay memories you can fixate on things you can get in a fight with like a, a spouse or a loved one and you know you kind of you're over analyzing oh was she did she touch that guy's arm at the party and that is that when she started an affair you know that kind of thing yeah but it's kind of that yeah it's like the coolness of teleportation mixed with the darkness of uh what happens when you consciously uh while you're awake go through the teleporter we haven't even touched on that yet so, no, so i this is a good, good yeah this enough. is a good a good segue uh when the the guy who invents it victor caroon he's uh sending mice through uh initially and when he sent the mouse through the mouse just kind of it was lively running around you know beforehand before he beforehand sent it he sends it through and it's still alive it's still breathing but its eyes you know have kind of gained like a faded over a faded over you know something's wrong and then briefly afterwards the the mouse dies and he actually the first one i believe he he uh, snaps his fingers right in front of it <laughs> and then it and keels it over. Yeah, so he sends through a few more. He sends one in only only the head first and, you know, halfway. And while he's doing this, uh, kind of going back to the finger, he sees, like, the cross section of the mouse. Like, you, he can see through the portal. You can see all the little, uh, you know, pretty much like a mouse cut in half. And Except it's not bleeding everywhere, but you can see the, the skin moving, the breathing, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Which sounds pretty cool, honestly. Like, yeah. I, th- I think that it's, would be it, really It was a pretty cool see, visual. To see in, like, a, a movie or something. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, so he uh, sends the mouse through butt first, just, you know, halfway through, and nothing happens to it. It stays normal. So then, you know, eventually gets around to drugging a mouse and sending it through and... You know, we kind of go from there, uh, but essentially the the idea is when you go through with your eyes open and you awake, um, the, the matter in your body gets transported, uh, but maybe something in your consciousness and something in your awake mind can't handle that transfer from you know miles away or you know planets away it just it can't handle it even though the teleportation is instantaneous he put you put it in one portal it comes out the other portal and like right right there there's no there's no time lapse which or anything which brings us to the cool one of the coolest parts of the book and it's the a guy who's on death row yes i think it's ruby foggia i I believe something close to that um, he, a guy, a murderer, a convicted murderer on death row, um, gets offered a one-time deal to go through the jaunt uh, awake, and he jokingly says, "You know, uh, if have my have, have a my chicken s- dinner, yeah. a chicken dinner ready for me on the other side, you know, because he's gonna die either way." So he's like, "Well, I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll do this." 
Yeah. 100% no, complete no strings pardon, attached. Complete, complete pardon. pardon. He would be able to walk out of there. and he, it, he sounds, says, it sounds like he strolls through. He walks through the portal. You know, he's not attached to like a chair or anything. He just strolls through. And it's like you think in that moment you go through the you know the threshold it's like are your eyes open are your eyes closed you know what do you experience as a you know a consciousness during a transfer like that and uh he goes out the other side and his hair is white his hair has become like i think jet white yeah and his face even though it's not wrinklier and hasn't taken on any uh, visible signs of age uh gained some sort of a I don't even an aged know. quality an aged quality and yeah, the you know, only... his eyes I'm sure his eyes his face is kind of dropped and uh, he says uh, it's eternity in there and uh, yeah. yeah and there's so... no there's no physical change other than the hair turning white and the eyes I don't know how you can add age into somebody without changing any aspect but they you know he kind of describes that they look aged and he comes out and that's a great line. It's eternity yeah. it's in there. It's eternity in there. And then he dies. Yeah. And I love that he uh, was yeah, in... From a massive heart attack. Yeah. Not just a heart attack. Massive. And he says uh, he when when he uh, came out the other side, he was in no condition to have his chicken dinner or something like that. So <laughs> yeah. He says it some funny <laughs> way. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, anyways, that that's, that's a great uh, uh, foreshadowing of uh, the book's ending, which... Uh, I guess uh, we can anything before we lead to that. I, I mean, you know, we'll go over things at the end as well. There, there are some little things here and there mm-hmm. about uh, the son, Ricky. Uh huh. Um, I don't know. If, well, some foreshadowing that he's just incredibly interested in the whole process of the jaunt. the The daughter's mostly focusing on, you know, what happened to the mice. What happened to the mice? Because the father's trying to, he's not, he doesn't want to scare them. So he's not telling them that the mice died. He's kind of glossing over that. Sugarcoating it yeah, a little sugarcoating bit. Yeah, sugarcoating it. But us, us as the, the, the reader, we get the full story. But then the it he cuts back to the husband and he's like, you know, I left out this part. And, yeah. you know, then he gives the story of that convicted murderer going insane. And that's but, when, when the convicted murderer, when he... I don't know if that he tells his kids that, but it kind of comes through that you have to be sedated, and that's just mm-hmm. how you go through okay. And his son is very intent on the story at that point. Fixated on the yeah, idea. And, and he's like, I don't know if he... Mark, Mark Oates is, is trying to figure out what's going on in his son's head. He's he like, I don't know if fear. he's excited yeah. or fear. I, I'm thinking it's fear, you know? And you find out later, no, what his son was. His son's twelve, right? Feeling, yeah, Something he's about close twelve. close to there. I think I remember reading and thinking, oh, he's close to Linnea's age. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like I, I can with, he's a, with a kid that old with Linnea, like the idea of, you know, them being so uh, curious of what would happen if you know you keep your eyes open, and what he ends up doing is he holds his breath while the gas, the the gas passers. He refers to him as the gas passers at one point. And I'm like, oh, it's a fart joke. <laughs> Anyways, the, the gas passers, they uh, they put it to his face and he he holds his breath and pretends to fall asleep. And, you and know. this is Ricky, yeah. Yeah. Ugh, it's brutal. No, it's... it's... <laughs> oh, real, real quick. Let's say let's say you, you go through the jaunt, you personally. How do you picture it? Do you picture it as eternal whiteness, eternal darkness, uh, crazy, you know, Doctor Strange type stuff, just passing through dimensions and, you know, Ant Man style and Doctor Strange style, or, or what do you picture? Okay, so <laughs> two sec, <clears throat> probably like five minutes ago uh-huh. while we were talking about it, I was picturing it. Um, think, oh my gosh, what is the movie? Two thousand one. Think two thousand one. <laughs> Big Hero Six. Big Hero Six. Those little round portals that they go through, and uh, the scene yeah, where yeah. they, you know, they go through. They send the, the pilot through one that's it's supposed to come cloudy, out the other. Right? So I kind of imagine not necessarily that bright of color. Yeah. I kind of imagine a whole rainbow of colors, yeah. a bit of everything, 
A little psychedelic. Mm-hmm. A little psychedelic, yeah. <laughs> so pretty much, have you ever seen the movie 2001? A Space Odyssey? No. Dude, there's this... Wait. Uh, so it's it's Stanley Kubrick. Like, you know, <sighs> it's it's it? it's classic, uh, you know, do... Yes, do, yes. Do, do. As soon as we said that, bum, yes. Bum, 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 yes, bum. we watched probably it together, copyright actually. copyright infringement. We watched it together? I'm sure we watched Dude, it together. that's awesome. We probably did. Um, yeah, I think at, I think it was at actually the end, at, uh, at the end of the movie. Uh, he he goes through who knows what like a black hole. I mean, it, you know, Interstellar kind of does its yeah. kind of nod to two thousand one and the idea of maybe traveling through space and time. And you know, you see all these crazy colors. He's in his uh, his astronaut helmet, and you just see his face and all these crazy colors. It's done pretty cool. It's it's neat to think of it as maybe something like that, like uh, you know, like you're kind of being blasted through time and space, and it's just like overpoweringly like. So fast. is that is that how you see it? Maybe I mean the other. Uh, that's one way that I kind of thought about it, but then sometimes I think of how scary it would be to just have like blank whiteness or blank darkness. You know, like the crazy colors. That's at least something for you to think about. But if you do a void, you know, maybe it's like a void of darkness or a void of light, you know, that's just so bland, so nothing for an eternity. And then you pop out the other side. I wonder if you see like a tunnel coming, you know, you see the destination. And when you finally get there, because the sun, when he when he comes out the other side, he he knows he's like, I held my breath. You know, I it's longer than you think, Dad. Yeah. It's longer than you think. And then he proceeds to tear out his gouge eyes. Gouge out his own eyes. Gouge out his own eyes. And that's how the story ends. Which Magnus Magnus sent me, I think when you finished it, he <laughs> sent me a text saying, it's longer than you think. He didn't say anything else. <laughs> didn't say anything else. No context text it's, message. And I didn't, it's longer than you think. And I guess I could have texted back. So, you know, I did text back a question mark. But I, I was like, I don't know what he's saying. And then I texted back something like, that's what she said. That's what she said. That was a good, that's what she said. Moment. Yeah, that, that was an appropriate one. <laughs> it's longer than you think. <laughs> oh, but, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I think I, think I want to go with the terror of whiteness. Because the terror of darkness, at least the idea of like, maybe you can close your eyes, maybe not. I don't even know if eyes would be a thing at that point. If you have like a conscious figure traveling through time, you know, who knows how your mind would come up with a way to cope with that process. So you but think you go through or avoid you're, of white. Broke, you're broken apart. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like a Star Trek style, you know, cause it says that the computer is part of it. You know, the computer is part of the process That's of true. delivering you from one to the other. There's even that little part in the middle that talks about the, uh, the void uh, or not void. No, somebody transports their wife to murder him and they set the destination to null, you know, zero, yeah. whatever. And so she just disappears into the jaunt. See, I always screaming for all time and eternity. I've always imagined it as you going in and uh-huh. you staying you stay yeah you stay physically the same and i think for me that's terrifying i don't know why i okay so i'm a, i'm terrified being of dismembered the, the idea of like passing through and like your arm is over there and you could wiggle it is no that no no what you're i mean like you go through and you are floating you are completely put together the same uh-huh. and you're just you're going through you're floating through whatever's in the middle the void uh-huh. between the two portals it's i think another thing that's crazy real quick is that they you don't see through it you can't see through the portal you know yeah it's like it's a it's a barrier it's like a, a, a an energy field and you just go into that energy field like you know the video game portal right yeah it's like you see what's on the other side of the portal that is easier for your mind to deal with and yeah, I think the idea of like passing through like your arm or your head or your leg and it's like it's part of you but it's not at the same time because it's on the other side of the portal. Yeah. That's pretty weird. That's true. Like that 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 like kind of sets off all sorts of weird like phantom limb type things in my mind when I think about it. It's a, it's a little bit of a body horror uh story now that I think about it that way. Yeah. Even him when his fingers are through, he's like, "Ah, you know." kind of got freaked out that his fingers were gone and he even uh, imagined the blood and everything you know yeah so no 
so I, I don't know why, but it's freakier to me going through your intact and then you're kind of floating through space because I I'm terrified of heights. And so in my head, it's just like forever falling without actually falling. Yeah, I, you know, I get nothing, that. Yeah. Nothing supporting me. You're just kind of floating down like Alice yeah. in Wonderland. Yeah. Oh, I hate that. Wee. <laughs> so, so here's here's something. But though. the the idea of like flying through crazy colors and prisms and stuff like uh, Doctor Strange that's kind of neat or um, and terrifying. Or, no, even better, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Willy Factory Wonka where they're going the through tunnel. the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna imagine that when you read the book, that might be a fun Dude. experience. By the way, Thor Ragnarok that scene. When he's uh, sitting in the chair and he's yeah. gonna meet the meet the what's what's his name? Oh my gosh! The the, the game maker. The, yeah. Whatever. Oh, shoot. We know who we're talking Anyways, about. Jeff yeah, Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. We'll probably cut this part out, just, but maybe we'll <laughs> leave it in. But yeah, the the going through that the ode to uh, Willy Wonka. I love that part. That made me laugh so hard. <laughs> oh will. man. Anyways, that's that's a good idea. That. Uh, the terror of that ride you know something that you your mind had to deal with for an eternity you know or this is the song that doesn't end over and over and over and over well just you know, think dropping of it. dropping water on your forehead like what could drive you insane you know no but think of it it's even more than those because there's no input yeah the you have the mind you cannibalizes have only... itself or whatever yeah auto but, auto cannibalism but even, yeah and with with the lack of input in it eating itself it's like what does it like does it try to figure out a way to deal with that nothingness you know again you know the doctor strange the hands all the crazy that stuff i think was kind of you know the his mind trying to deal with the idea of what it was going through you know it's like would it become some sort of insane person's like entire universe within your you know your brain as it's popping and blowing up inside you know from the lack of everything anyways it's wacky you know it's interesting <laughs> he did say electronic things anything could pass through and come out the other end just fine yeah there's a there's why, a very why, very, why did very put... minute like length of time i can't remember yeah like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a second why why didn't and maybe this is this is something fun to think about why why hasn't anybody in the story in the context of the story you know sent through a camera a camera yeah. i mean they sent through people it's it's a very again it's it's one of those uh things that i think stephen king just avoided like eh, we'll just not mention yeah. it yeah maybe he didn't want to mention but it yeah cause... that would have been cool and again that could be something you could explore in a movie yeah. Or a TV adaptation. Just expand it. it, you know, yeah. and expand it. Maybe bring it to modern age versus nineteen eighty whatever, you know, and or I guess the, and, you know, you know what I'm saying. It, it, that that that's a fun thing I thought of is like mm -hmm. when they sent through a video camera, it going through, come out the other side, and even if it was just like blank white, mm -hmm. or you know, yeah, could have snowstorm. <laughs> Yeah, something. Something. Um, it would have been that would have been no, cool. No, what's really funny is uh, at the at the Jaunt station, he mentions the New York World Times paper. M one of the people, one of the people going on the the Jaunt trip, he has a newspaper folded under his arms. He has a newspaper in the year twenty three oh seven. Yeah, I found that adorable. I'm like, oh, Stephen King still thinks we're gonna be using print media <laughs> in twenty three oh seven. That's adorable. <laughs> oh, Stevie yeah no it, it probably wouldn't be made of paper but yeah it's like funny newspaper well, and this true. was written in the 80s it's like someone in the 80s who knows how long they think newspapers are gonna go for, yeah you know <laughs> i thought that was funny but yeah man did you okay the jaunt dark tower uh-huh okay so he mentions the something like a book about the jaunt it's like the jaunt under the rose or something do you remember that no ah, shoot hold on i'm gonna pause this and we're back so i i thought this was important enough just to bring up uh bring it up i probably meant to write it down but uh ch -ch 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 -ch. when he's going over the story mark uh in the in the book he said uh he 
I'll just read this. He would not tell them, for instance, about C.K. Sum Summer's book, The Politics of the Jaunt, which contained one section called The Jaunt Under the Rose, a compendium of the more believable rumors about the jaunt. So just the under the rose. I, I don't know if that had anything to do with... Uh, no, no, no. I, th I think it does. In, in Stephen King, Dark Tower stuff, you know, the, the rose is important. But something about the jaunt under the rose, I didn't know. Anyways, that was that was it. Now you're going to talk about Dark Tower with the well, portals, right? Yeah, so I was thinking... I would have loved a, a, a name drop of uh, North Central Positronics or something. That would have been... This was so early in his career that he probably didn't have that mapped out as much. No, you know? but, but then again, I don't know. So in the Dark Tower, doors, uh, you know, portals are a huge thing. Huge. And so I was I was thinking about it. I was like, what if the jaunt is a pre is a you know this technology is kind of a precursor to the fallout or... to the doors mm -hmm. and the portals and everything used in the Dark Tower because those doors and portals, um, the main characters Roland, uh, Jake, you know all the main characters can walk through those doors and portals with no ill effect. Yeah. And so I was thinking the jaunt. They, they like, figured it out. Yeah, they finally <laughs> figured it out this was a precursor to the ones the that are used, used in the Dark Tower. In the Dark Tower. So, you know what's really funny? Meaning the Dark Tower is set far in this the future. This is Roland's world. Yeah. And this is a pre, you know, pre wrecked world or whatever. Yeah, and so these. I, I the like that idea. Yeah, these people are the great old ones referred to in, mm -hmm. like that Roland refers so, to. You know what's really funny? I didn't even consider that. Oh all. my gosh, are you serious? I've never ever considered the jaunt as a Dark Tower story. Oh and my, I, that's I, that's all I've been thinking of. And, I was reading it and I was just, I was crapping my pants. I know, and it's really uncommon for me because I'm looking for Dark Tower connections everywhere. But again, that kind of shows the power of this story. I'm like able to like disassociate it from Stephen King, which is hard for me to do. And <laughs> I just kind of thought of it as like a sci-fi story on its own. And this time through, I remember thinking, oh, I'll look for a Dark Tower connection. And I heard that, the, the thing under the rose, the jaunt, under the, jaunt the rose. under the rose. And I'm like, yeah, maybe there is some Dark Tower. And I still didn't see what was right in front of me, the idea of the doors. That's actually pretty cool. No, I, I've... Yeah. Okay, I, like I just leveled up. <laughs> you leveled up. <laughs> you have leveled up. <laughs> no, but that, that's something that I've been thinking of because doors, portals in the Dark Tower are huge. And this is a precursor, and this is Roland's world, just far in the past. Mm -hmm. And that oh, that's you know, cool. Roland's story takes place, you know, far in the future, which is is almost the same. It is so far in the future, it has become yeah. It's a new the past. It's a too. new uh, so it's kind of kind of cool demarcation point. Boom. You yeah, know, where it just starts as a, a new prehistory. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, that's really cool i i really i really like yeah yeah who I knows really like man story we're gonna be leaving behind all sorts of weird stuff for the next civilization after us exactly that's 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 cool um Good. well hey man i mean we're we're kind of at the end like um any i was thinking I, uh book recommendations book, or anything so, from this guy book recommendations from this guy or no no just um for constant listeners if, oh if they want to you know they want to read the jaunt or maybe if they want to read something similar it's, or branch yeah, the, out the authors that i the, that i was bringing up before by the way you know ray bradbury uh philip k dick you know whoever um those guys are really good if you if you like this story if you listen to this story after hearing us talk about it or before uh, but those those guys are all really good at these types and it very easily you know you could see it as a twilight zone episode i'm surprised it hasn't been turned yeah. into an episode of something you know yeah. so i think it's only a matter of time before we see like a netflix show that's basically a nightmares and dreamscapes or something you know yeah. a bunch of stephen king short stories that can be adapted into just again a little 45 minute 30 minute who knows you know but a show like Black Mirror, that's pretty much the same same yeah. deal. So, how but, many how many thumbs up? Oh, this this is again this is my favorite <laughs> my favorite uh, short story by Stephen King. I've got a very 
large love for them and uh, this is the best one there's there's a few others that uh, probably would hold in my top 10 and what I think we should go through them yeah I, I love but. this one it it was a good one to start with as far as short stories and mm -hmm. I think I don't know. I am more open to short stories now. After thinking about <laughs> well, after, committing to this sort of thing. Well, after really after reading the introduction and thinking, okay, I need to see it as the kiss with a stranger. Something, you know, that can hold its own magic. Something that can be just as satisfying as long as I'm not going expecting, you know, the love affair that I would have. With it's the fireworks, baby. Yeah. So yeah <laughs> well um anyways i guess that that concludes the episode um i guess we'll figure out what we're gonna do next and uh mark is gonna laugh us out i think <laughs> <laughs>